Hello and welcome back, I hope you are well. Part of my art studying has been focused around head drawing recently. I am self-teaching myself art, and this is going to be like a mix of a study progress vlog, a little sketch tour, and also talking about one of the ways I'm studying head drawing at the moment. In the past, before I started YouTube, I completed the 100 heads challenge, and let me see on my sketchbook shelf, it's... The sketchbook I did the 100 heads challenge in and after that I did the 50 fantasy heads challenge which is in the sketchbook. And more recently one of the ways I have been studying heads has been using a resource called Earth's World which you can find on Instagram and you can also go on their website as well. I use both interchangeably. Earth takes candid photogra photography? Candid photographs of people visiting county fairs in the US and you get a beautiful range as you can see here of ages and face shapes, facial features and also races, weight ranges, just variety in all the different ways you could want and some of the things I'm focusing on right now with head drawing are getting a variety of angles so that I can practice different angles and gain familiarity with them and also just understand the head in perspective. Another is to improve at expressions and capturing expressions. The third thing is exploring variety in terms of face shapes, facial features, ages, races, weight ranges and so on. So again, this is perfect for that. And then also general mileage from observational sketching. And then another thing that I also do is drawing heads from imagination, which is just putting into practice what I learned from those previous four points. And this particular exercise that I'm going to show you some of the sketches I've been doing for is mainly for the first four points so to capture angles expressions variety and also just gain general mileage from observational sketching and i've been doing all of these in ballpoint pen so you can see some of them over here i have been sketching in blue as you can see here but also black and then i also got some of these four color ones recently and the reason why I went with ballpoint pen for these is for that balance of being able to build up from a lighter sketch to darker lines and not being able to erase at the same time. So there's a balance between those two things by using these. Uh, this sketchbook is the Stillman and Burn Alpha series and this is the 4 by 6 inch size. I've been enjoying this paper with ballpoint pen quite a lot. It's got texture enough to it that you can get a variety of line weight really, really easily. And it's quite, what's the word? It's quite uh, helpful with my pressure sensitivity with ballpoint pen because some papers, especially really smooth ones like the Hanamula Nostalgie, you have to be really, really careful with your pressure sensitivity with ballpoint pen because the lines will just go down really, really dark if you're not careful. So you can see here some of the sketches that I've been doing. And what I did with these ones is I went onto the website, so Earthworld's website, and I took, I went into a particular fair on the website. I went to day two of the Clackamas, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Clackamas, County Fair in 2007. And I started with the very first image and then I just kept drawing each photograph, just hitting next, drawing it, hitting next, without skipping any of them. So I was forced to explore all the different angles and variety rather than just sticking to things that I'm more familiar with. And these are some more from that county fair as well. And I outlined them with a Tombow water-based marker, 
which I've been enjoying in the Alpha book and then also in my Mixed Media Strathmore, the 500 series, which I recently started. And as you can see, you get a variety of weights to explore, interesting expressions. And then this woman here, there were two photographs of her and she had, is it an underbite or an overbite? Where the jaw comes out underneath, which was interesting. And she had a really interesting expression and she was hiding behind a man. So I put the silhouette of the man here and then she was hiding behind him and she looked like really scared. <laughs> Like if she was scared of the man or something. Um, but I think she was just like really, really lost in thought. And really, really intensely thinking. I struggled with her expression quite a lot, which was a fun challenge to do for me. And this was also a really interesting expression for me as well to do. It was a challenge as well because she had her like tongue sticking out to the side. And she was also lost deep in thought as well. So some of the, those are some of the ones I've been doing. And then in another sketchbook, I... So this is a Hanamula Nostalgi sketchbook. I did a full spread, again in blue. I was really enjoying blue when I first started these. So that's the particular one. The particular photograph set, I suppose. The Clackamas County Fair, day two of two. And the reference was taken in 2007. So this man here, he had like a mouthful of water and he had his cheeks puffed out, holding the water in, which was difficult to try to capture, <laughs> but interesting. And then this woman here was on the phone and there were multiple photographs of her. And this was where I started noticing that a lot of the photographs in this set had people with either glasses or sunglasses on. So I ended up exploring and practicing drawing glasses in perspective as well, which is definitely something that I'm not familiar with. So it's been a lot of good practice for me. So we have the woman with the phone. So I also got loads of hand practice in there with that. There was this woman who had a really interesting neck and she was really deep in thought. And then this woman here had her glasses hanging off, which was a really interesting perspective to have as well. And then with this one, I was trying to explore some of the lighting a little bit more because these ones I explored the lighting a little bit in some areas, especially for the eyes and to make distinctions with, say, like, the phone from the hand. And here I went into a little bit of the shadows as well, just for some of the major facial features. But this one I tried to really capture the lighting a little bit more and also exploring capturing the lighting from the glasses, so the shadow from the glasses over the face. So this was a challenge as well, but a really, really good one for me to practice. So this is some of the uh, studying I've been doing. So this in particular is part of my studying practice and then when I'm doing my creative practice sometimes I'll use reference and then sometimes I'll work from imagination in order to create say characters or do fantasy illustrations and concepts then it's a different session from these. I think I have another sketch in this one as well that I did recently. Yeah, there it is. So this one's in green and he had a really interesting facial expression, but also the proportions of his face. He had quite, not super big, but rounded ears that were proportionally, what's the word, like they went out more? And then his face, his facial features were quite squished together. But he had a really interesting mouth expression that I tried to capture. I don't think I did a 100% <laughs> um, 
Uh, I don't think I've one hundred percent captured it, but I do. And I do like how that ended up coming out, and. You can see where I did the initial lay-in really, really lightly in ballpoint pen and then I had to bring it back down because I made the upper head too large. So I then moved, shifted it all down and then went in with the darker lines. So again, you can see where I was making mistakes because I can't erase, which is really, really helpful when I'm studying in this particular way because not only does it help me with my line confidence and building line confidence but then I can also go back since this is studying I can go back and I can see where I was struggling what mistakes I was making how I fixed them did it actually fix it and things like that I can go back and analyze my sketching a little bit more as a result and you can see some of the construction lines on these ones as well like I mentioned, you have to be a bit more careful with pressure sensitivity on this paper, so I did notice very quickly that I had to be really careful when doing the construction lines that they would still be light enough to not get in the way of the final sketch. And you can see some of the initial lines here for the head and the hairline and the top of the ear there which I ended up shifting down so I can go back and I can look through my thought process while I was studying so what I might do next week's video is do a spread of heads and you can maybe sketch along with me if you fancy that this one this video is more of a vlog kind of <laughs> thing to show you where I'm at and just to document some of my studying at this moment and then I can document how I'm improving over time with this particular subject. So let me know how you like to study. If you're interested in knowing some of the other things I do to study heads because this is only one exercise that I do let me know in the comments, let me know how you enjoy studying, what you, you're studying at the moment, I'd love to know, and I'll see you next week. Bye!